to do it at all. Oh, okay. okay. Time to check on my worms. Are they alive? Yeah, I'm gonna just take off this first one. Not seeing much there. This is basically, uh huh. So we got a lot of these flies in here. But do we actually have um, some worms, which is what we wanted. So that's the answer to that. These uh, things were dead. These things are dead. Um, so... I need to buy a new. So, so hi guys, it looks like a bit of a murder scene or a crime scene here. Made a little well in here. It's, um, it's about a meter long, this tub, a uh, meter deep. And about the first four inches there are mixed with rice and uh, rice husks bit of soil it's just a normal uh here they call it plant yard but it just means planting soil and it's also got some cow manure in there and that's going to be for just one zucchini so this is going to be for one of my zucchinis which i've been what i've been doing with zucchini is putting them outside there and there I'm going to take this one here. So I don't care about the other one, but the other one looks a little bit more stronger, looks more green. And yeah, the reason why I mix the soil here with these rice husks is because apparently they add something called silica to the soil. And that's strengthening the outer body of these plants. And I think that's what a zucchini needs, really. But I'm not really 100% sure, but that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to take this and take all of the soil in here and put it into here. update on the worm situation and a few other things I bought this had to find it online pretty easy this box here what this is don't know if I can't, can get the right lighting you have to look very carefully what this actually is, is springtails. You see one moving on the rock there. See him? Just near to that rock, you can see him moving on that rock on the uh, left hand side. And we've got hundreds of these little things in here, very white in color. They're springtails. So the problem I had when I opened my worm bin that has been outside on the balcony the entire winter is the worms have died. Um, and I put some fresh kitchen scraps in there. And what I have in there is like, it's like a startup of these, it's like fruit flies have sort of started to colonize the worm bin my intention is to buy some more worms 
uh, that I found online and reintroduced them. And now I know how to take care of this worm bin much better um, in terms of well, in terms of many things, in terms of not leaving them out for the winter, Ooh. and in terms of uh, what? How not to put water through it for it too much, because uh, as you saw, that it was a, like a drainage system that I had. Anyway, here's uh, some update on. The beetroots, they seem to be doing okay. I'm waiting for them to look a bit bigger and a bit stronger before I put them outside on the, my, in my Kia raised bed. Kia bag raised bed. Ginger here is not doing anything. He's not doing anything. There's a squash. I put two squashes outside on the raised bed. I'll show you that uh, later. But right now, I'm going to put the rest of these in, because I put some in already into the worm bin. But I'm going to put the rest... I'm going to put the rest of these... springtails into... the worm bin. So the main reason why I'm putting this in is because I have already put half in half of this in with the substrate that comes in these springtails and uh, I've got a kind of like a fr fruit fly um, problem inside of the worm bin because there's nothing else to eat the veg because the worms have died so basically this is me just filming putting the rest of these things in they come in substrate uh, I think the best thing to keep them in is charcoal you can hardly see them at all. When I'm out here, I put two tomatoes on this makeshift shelf makeshift shelf there's two tomato plants and i made sort of this netting thankfully i have this bar up there which i can tie the ropes onto little strings onto You can see the knots up at the top where the string has been. So I started that and then I'm just attaching other strings so it's like squares. Gonna make like a spider web sort of effect. And then I'm gonna then I'm attaching the string to these uh, cocktail sticks that like I've put like three, so it's like a teepee on the plant and then uh, just attaching the string to the top of that. Hopefully the tomatoes plants is gonna uh, use these strings to climb, but we'll see, I can give them help along the way. So I've got to separate this, this is my, this here is my spinach, I'm gonna, um, separate it out it's done tremendously well so i don't really want to disturb it too much um but i think i've got to space them out a bit one zucchini that i put outside to harden there's the other one there so squash or zucchini, however you want to say. Rice holes to stop the sun from drying the soil too much. And also there's rice holes mixed in with it because it gives it silica, it gives the soil, it gives whatever plant it, um, something called silica, which is like hardens the skin or something. 
radishes are checked on them they're still not completely grown it's like three weeks after i sowed the radishes same there kind of the same there so these ones a bit later peas still working on climbing up in the sakia bag garlic not looking any different uh, spring onions yeah they're there they're not doing much still these beetroots there as well they are well growing slowly but at least they're growing i think it's uh, one of the only pack choice that i is survived and they're not doing very well so i gotta reassess what i'm doing or i planted mini pack choice so maybe i should plant something else like a normal pack choy and it'll do better Here's another little zucchini I had to save because it was getting too much sunlight, so I put a little cheesecloth on my window there. Also, I have here on the north side of our flat, because we've got one window south and one window north. Uh, these definitely need separating. I don't know. I've run out of pots, so I don't really know when that's going to be possible. I don't know what to put them into. Maybe I have too much tomato plants, it's looking like this one. I like this one, it's like single on its own. I'll probably put this outside and do uh, do that little cocktail stick uh, attached to these ropes that were, hang it, were, were tied to that top bar. So hopefully it's gonna, the tomato plants are gonna crawl up it. Also this one is nice and single. I'm liking the ones that are single on their own, but I'm not liking the ones that are all clumped together, like this one, that one as well. Uh, but these ones are superb. These are all cocktail tomato, uh, tomatoes, cocktail tomatoes, and they're really tasty cocktail tomatoes, different colors and everything. They looked really nice. So I will be taking extra special care of these, putting them into bigger pots and putting them on that, that pot and cocktail string, stick and string system that I have on my south facing balcony. So that's why I've got this one here. I'm just like hardening him with the opening the window, letting them be, letting them acclim acc acclim acc acclimate acclimate that's the word but each of these is going into a pot like this big or much bigger a little bit bigger like twice the size for each of these uh, cocktail tomato plants which are all nice and singular so there's a bit of advice if you're going to separate them out separate them out in a to single so so as i just showed you um i just gave you a little tour, I guess is the best word to use, a tour of uh, my plants, what I'm growing and what's happening. So I've got this little tool here again, the one I didn't know that, I didn't know what it was for. And I have also used this little arrowhead here, pointy, sharp, to poke holes in these uh, creme fresh type containers. So these creme fresh type, these divots are going from the inside out. So what I want to do now is I've mixed some soil. And as I said, I had to change these, uh, what you might call them? These containers are too small for the size of this uh, plant here. So, you know, uh, they're quite tall now, these are big monsters. So they need to be put into a new home. This is its new home. So the difference here is what I've done is I'm running out of perlite. So I've, I've substituted perlite for something more organic. Well, it's, you can, I say more organic. I just said what I just say. I'm just ex experimenting with different things. 
So this is also giving the soil air and aerating the soil. That's what it needs, whether you like it or not. Uh, this one is that when you mix it into the soil, it's actually producing as well. The rice husks are producing something called silica, which is strengthening the out, outer body, the leaves and the outer body of the plant. So the more strong they are, the better they are at withstanding sunlight and outside te temperatures. Even though I have been hardening these plants, uh, I've been hard hardening this plant because it was on my north facing window, I've been opening the window. So they are semi hardened. Um, yeah, you've got to do that over a period of time. Uh, how, how much time is really up to you. Uh, you can just you can think decide yourself. Yeah, these 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 plants have experienced enough of the outside life to sort of move them outside now. Sometimes they're going to work. Sometimes they're not going to work. So this is my this is, has about twenty percent cow manure, twenty percent rice husks, and sixty percent normal planting soil potting planting soil from uh, the shop yeah, the online shop you can go look at it online and there's plenty of nurseries that are selling and delivering so that's what i did there and here we go with filling these up these pots and let gravity do its work so we've got it horizontal going to gently pull gently gently squeeze you see those healthy white roots and in and that's it you can see obviously uh, you need to fill in the, the gaps here you don't have to even bother disturbing the root system so much here they're all planted singular so that's nice and easy for when you want to trans transfer them from and now they're gonna this one's gonna live in here for quite a long time on my balcony shelf um showing that little pulley system that i showed to transfer them outside to the balcony shelf i'm going to need to stick these little cocktail sticks in here and i want these to sort of work like a tp uh, tp structure so this is enough that is that is absolutely fine for me i'm perfectly happy with it so I'm going to do like this, like I've done with this, with all of these nine here. Very easy, as I just showed you. Okay, you can see from outside, we've got the string and shelf system for two of these. Tables. As far as this one's concerned, I'm just going to put them here. As you see there, I've tied these strings to there, to that TP structure. I'm going to do exactly the same on there. This is my bag of rice hulls. I'll just take a handful, like so. Just carefully sprinkle, sprinkle those rice hulls in there. And that's going to actually protect the soil which is uh, really important to do, especially if they're on a south facing window like this. Okay, well, this is the last tiny bit of this video and as normal, I will get the bottom of this, I'll get some soil and press it down, as you see there, and then get a loose layer on top and that is what I've done with all of these seed trays here. Um, including these ones, they're a little bit different. And my, what I'm gonna do is, um, 
into there I'm going to plant some normal pak choy so here are the seeds they're really tiny so I have to be extra careful when I'm putting them in just going to make a little uh, tiny little dent in each of these for each of these in each of these I'm going to try and put one Obviously you have to wet, the soil is already wet, but I want to just add a little bit of moisture. So I'm going to do these ones singular, I think. And anyway, I'll try and get one in each here. I'm just going to sprinkle them actually. And then I'll separate them or thin them later on. That's that. Just gonna cover them. This is the way, and then I'll have it on a north facing window. If you don't have that, you know, just put it uh, somewhere where it's put up, stick up some uh, paper on your window so that it doesn't get do full direct sun. Because these pak choy, when they're very young, there's a big danger, as I've already found out, that they will they will just wilt away if they get too much sun. It's an autumn where you should start these in the autumn for the best result, but I'm starting them now in the end of spring. So now this little worm farm is ready for some new worms. It's got the top layer, it's got some vegetables in there, like scraps from the kitchen, carrots and stuff. Second layer is the actual uh, castings. And it's got, so I've, as I've shown, I've thrown some springtails into that. So they're doing nicely. Bottom layer is clay balls and this little tube so that I can put water right in the top. It will run all the way through the whole system and come out here, get a bit of, um, stuff to put on the plants like worm tea